I am the owner of the Soul Awakening Academy. Hi, Laura. And I run spiritual life coaches. So I train people to become spiritual coaches using my uh, specific soul awakening method. So tonight I'm going to tune in and I'm going to help deliver some messages through my own intuition, through spirit, through universal consciousness, and just see what comes up for you guys. So I'm all about um, supporting you especially those who are on the spiritual path, of course, um, and of course, those, those who aren't, you know, just here to support you if you have an open mind. But my really kind of niche background is helping people overcome their limiting beliefs, especially childhood limiting beliefs, and helping them find and follow their spiritual purpose. So a little bit about my backstory. Um, I had a bit of a turbulent childhood to say the least and through many years I lived in a state of fear and anxiety and lack of confidence low self-esteem and when I had my breakdown postnatal depression breakdown after my son uh, it was about me discovering my spiritual self and really asking the inner existential questions what was the meaning to my life and I looked back on my childhood negative experience and, and took the lessons that I could from that and my passion was to actually it's to work with children and help them see that they have gifts within them that everybody has a potential within them that potential might be dormant because of the messages you've received but actually with the right mindset you can release your true potential um, and right now I'm doing that in a spiritual way training people to become amazing spiritual coaches at the Soul Awakening Academy. So tonight really is about tuning into you. It's about tuning into what your challenge is, what your limiting belief is. Sometimes when we're in the middle of a challenge, we can't see the wood for the trees. I myself, I go to shamans, I go to healers, I go to astrology, you know, people who do astrology, tarot. That is my big go-to when I am at a block because the amazing thing about symbology, it's all about archetypes. One of the things we teach a lot of in the course is helping you understand the story, the archetypal story that's playing out, how you're trapped in it and how you can move forward. So I've got a mix tonight and you know what, I just like to use my intuition with how I'm going to work with you. So I've got a mix of uh, chakra dice, um, astrology dice, I've got my pendulum, got a system I've created, a quantum holographic echo healing, which can look at your core belief and your emotion and your block to see what's going on. So write your comment, write in the comments what your current issue, challenge or block is, and I can start to tune in and see if I can get some answers for you. So just keep commenting and keep commenting. Hi, we're live. <laughs> if you tell me your block is, and I can start to tune in and see if I can get myself. One second, I've got myself open somewhere. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, so let's just see if people are asking questions. So sorry about that, because I, I didn't tell you I was going earlier. So I've got my favorite astrologer on with me. She's my uh, spiritual mama. <laughs> Nicola, who is an amazing astrologer and tarot reader. So we're going to just, I'm just going to get straight on and just start tuning in with people. And then we can have a little talk about the astrology. Um, Samantha says she's feeling as if she's stuck in treacle. Am I on the right path coaching an EFT? Now we always get a theme. So Nicola can tell us about what the theme is because of so above, so below. Astrologically, I believe and I know Nicola believes it, heart and soul, that the planetary alignments affect us on a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual level. And every time I go live and I ask the question, what's your current issue, challenge or block? The same theme comes flooding through and it's different this week as it was to last week. It's so amazing. Um, confidence. So feeling stuck. Confidence. Okay. So why would 
peep i had a quick look at the chart before and we've got at the minute the sun and the moon in opposition i think sun and taurus moon and leo i think yeah so hi <laughs> <laughs> What would be, because, yeah, we, I can't remember what else I saw in the chart, but what else would be influencing people's confidence right now? You mean apart from all the COVID stuff? We're not going to talk about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that just brings people down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's, I mean, there is so much going on. Everyone, it's funny because I was just talking about this in, a, in another group um, about an hour ago. There's a lot of really stressful elements at the moment. Um, and, you know, one of the main ones is this Uranus Saturn square, um, which is going, you know, Uranus and Saturn are pretty much in square all year, but it perfects again. They go into an exact 90 degree angle on the 14th of June. Okay. So, you know, that is tension in itself. I think we're going to see a lot of stuff coming up around that. But the other thing is, if we're talking from a business perspective, all year, pretty much so far, most of the planets have been moving forward. Yes. So when the planets move forward, we get lots of motivation. We're able to do things. We're able to make things happen in real time. They're now beginning to retrograde. We've just had Pluto go retrograde. Mercury goes retrograde on Sunday. So this technical snafu that we have, and I think it's going to be massive with that we had last week and then me getting the time wrong tonight no. is because we're in the shadow of Mercury retrograde. Yeah. So I've so, had so many bad tech issues. I mean, really yeah. business up. Yeah. Uh, tech, tech issues. That's Mercury because we're in his shadow. Yeah. And when he, now he's slowing down to start going backwards again everything i mean he's always strongest at the beginning and the end of the retrograde so he doesn't actually finish up his retrograde till june 22nd it's a long time um and so you know and then we've got the the shadow to kind of unwind as well so it's it's not a great because he's a, what we call a personal planet it affects us very personally very viscerally you know we we, we find that technical things start to go wrong Mercury is our communication ability, so sometimes that can be quite literal, you know, the throat chakra starts getting a bit blocked and we say the wrong things or we say the wrong things to the wrong people. So um, there's four other main planets going retrograde, the, some heavyweights in June. Yeah. And so June is not a great month. This is why everyone's feeling a bit, and on top of all this, on top of all the retrogrades, we're getting massive solar flares at the moment. So everyone's feeling really tired. tired. Yeah, so tired. Um, I'll put my kind of spin on it at the minute because I'm going through some really turbulent times. But yet, even though on the surface, it looks really turbulent, behind that, I know this is just a, a peeling back. This is just a getting rid of. And what's happening for me at the minute, and let me know if, if anybody's feeling the same, is what I feel is happening, and we've got eclipses coming, haven't we, which are conjunct the North and the South Node. What I feel is happening for me personally, there's so much stripping back of my business at the minute, which I could go into absolute meltdown about. But what it's actually doing is it's honing my niche more and more and more and more and more and it is helping me really follow my true north node my true soul purpose like i've never felt it like this before it's coming through so strong yet on the surface everything's gone to shit yet i know inside this is all meant to be because it's allowing me to really understand what the purpose is so if any of think, you guys are yeah. feeling that just know we have got like nicholas saying so much going on but also we're leading up to these eclipses aren't we so tell us what the eclipses mean well we've got i mean all the eclipses follow a certain pattern over eight they go in 18 month cycles what we call soros cycles and so at the moment all the eclipses are happening in gemini and sagittarius 
So we've all got Gemini and Sag in our chart somewhere, and it depends individually which houses they fall in as to what it personally means for you. So we've got a lunar eclipse coming up on the 26th, which is next week. And that is in Sagittarius. That's a full moon solar eclipse. And they come in pairs. So then we've got a um, new moon um, solar eclipse on June the 10th. And that is 19 degrees of Gemini, if I'm remembering correctly. So it means different things to different people, but it generally lunar eclipses change the way that we feel about something. So say that you've got Sagittarius, which is a very kind of powerful can do um, exploratory sign, say that you've got that in your 10th house of career. Yeah. Then what it's going to mean is that your emotions become eclipsed about something to do with your career. And where you might have been sailing along with this slight feeling of discontent around whatever your long term aims and ambitions are, then the eclipse, if you're not doing the right thing, if you're not on the right path, it will throw up really strong emotions. I mean, what you're saying now about this whole kind of psychological unraveling is a lot to do with the retrogrades, because that's what, especially Pluto and Mercury, because that's what they do. They make us look back and go inwards and all of that good stuff. But the eclipses tend to be more felt in the body, especially lunar eclipses. And we really kind of go, do you know, I'm really not enjoying doing this anymore. So it's not that it causes an action in your life, a lunar eclipse, it's that it causes such deep feelings and emotions that invariably over the three to six months following it, if we're not on the right path, we end up changing something. Now, solar eclipses, the one on the 10th of June, wherever you've got Gemini in your chart. So if you've got um, a 10th house Saggy, you've got a fourth house Gemini, probably. And so that's about home and family, ancestry, that kind of thing. But this is a solar eclipse, a sun eclipse. Mm. And what happens with solar eclipses is that they cause a more immediate effect in the real world, in the 3D. So we know pretty much straight away what that eclipse will be about in our lives. So if it's the fourth house, then it could be a change to home. It could be a change around family, something very significant about that house. So, you know, it, it is an individual thing, but they happen to all of us. Now, there is another, um, I don't want to ramble on too much about it, but the, you know, the, the eclipses always take place near the nodes. Yeah. And so there's something about these eclipses, especially during this time, that's very significant for the world. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to see, you know, because Gemini is about our home base and our local neighborhoods and the people we communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis. Saji is long distance travel and uh, going far from places, learning from people overseas, you know, higher philo philosophical concepts. So when those areas get eclipsed, and they're not the only set of eclipses this year, there's ones at the end of the year as well, then something changes around those themes. And it's very salient this year because it's around this whole business of being able to travel where we want to, to travel, or you know what happens in our local neighborhoods and communities. And it causes that kind of vibration as well as, as happening to us personally. And what are the eclipses like designed to do? You know, what's the benefit of them? Is it to put, make sure, is it to close cycles in our life? Is it to open new ones? Well, yeah, I mean, they all, eclipses travel in, you know, what we call seros cycles. And so, you know, they, they go through this kind of 18, 19 year churn. And so, you know, you can trace eclipses back in people's charts and you can see what kinds of themes and effects are happening around eclipses. But what's the purpose of them is that they, you know, if we're not listening to the signs, if we're not, if we're doing something and we know we shouldn't be, or if we're doing it for the wrong reasons, they course correct us. And sometimes in, in really um, abrupt ways, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've literally had, I won't go into details, but I've had clients where, 
you know, on solar eclipses, something momentous changed in their lives on, on those days that they just didn't see, because that's the other thing, eclipses hide things. So it's things that you might not be quite um, conscious of, but all of a sudden it's thrown into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, and with, with lunar eclipses, you've got time to kind of do something about it. With solar eclipses, sometimes you've just got to react really quickly to events because they're just going boom, 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 boom. I mean, I literally had one client, I'll never forget, you know, because she was actually in one of my astrology groups and, um, you know, there was a there was a big incident on on a solar eclipse about four years ago where she found something out about a partner and literally two minutes after the perfection of the solar eclipse, the police were knocking on her door. Yeah. And, you know, and that was in the seventh house, which not only deals with partnerships, but deals with legalities. Mm. So, you know, it can be that literal. That's interesting. Some people don't feel them. If it's not linking to any of your personal planets, it can just be kind of like, oh, this full moon feels a bit testy. Okay, that's interesting. So it's have a look at your chart and you can go to astro.com. Put your birth time, date of birth in and you'll see your snapshot of your natal chart. And then you can go to transits, put the date of the transits in. What's the yeah. date again? The 26th of May. and 26th then... of May and the 10th of June. June. And then lunar just, eclipse, solar eclipse. Yeah, just see if it's hitting any of your um, planets. Okay. If it's hitting your sun, your moon, your Mercury, Venus, or Mars, and the first one is at five degrees of Sagittarius, the second solar eclipse is at 19 degrees of Gemini. So if you've got planets at any of those degrees in your chart and you know how to read your chart then you this is going to mean more for you it will affect you yeah and obviously if they want a reading then then you can definitely help okay so does anyone resonate with that because that's potentially why i'm i'm feeling that i can basically been asking myself the questions what is it that i really want to do in my business what 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 makes me happy and am I really focusing on it or have I got a bit caught up in uh, the noise of the business and, and overly creating things and allowing my brain to have shiny object syndrome when all that does is really steal your energy from the things that you love the most and the reasons why I kind of I, I set this up in the first place, which was to share uh, my coaching methods with people. So if, for me, it's about getting back to the basics of that and doing more of that because that's what gets me out of bed every day. So how do you guys feel about what Nicholas just said about the eclipses can start to strip things back that you might think are good for you, but they're not particularly on for your soul's purpose and direction? So Lindsay says, I feel exactly the same right now in terms of peeling back to find my purpose. Yeah. Helen says, I feel like I'm stuck at the bottom of a deep dark hole with no way out personally and in business. Every time I think things are getting better, I get kicked back to the bottom again. Yeah, it can feel really rough when that happens. I'm I think, yeah, I can I can relate to that, especially at the minute. It's it's like a tsunami of one thing after another. Um, what's helping me right now is I am literally just taking it on the chin, taking it on the chin, taking it on the chin again, because I know that it will end. And at the end of that, I'll have so much more clarity and be so much more aligned um, to whatever it is that spirit are directing me towards. You know, I, I'm saying to a lot of people at the moment as well, and I don't want to be kind of like Dolly Downer, but we are entering a really difficult few months of the year because there's so much transition this year, so much change. And I've got a lot of business clients and all of them, whether they're making like loads of money or just starting out, wherever they are on the growth curve of business, everyone is feeling uncertain at the moment because the economy is so uncertain at the moment 
Um, and the astrology really backs that up. June, July, August are, you know, they're kind of demanding that you really, like Anne-Marie says, go, go inwards and find out what you're supposed to be doing at this time on the planet. Mm. What is really calling you? Um, you know, what gives you joy? Mm. And it doesn't have to be about saving the world or some great um, altruistic kind of venture. Mm. You know, unless you're happy mm. in what you're doing day to day, yeah. then you're not holding light and space for other people because yeah. you just end up going kind of inwards and it just yeah. all starts crumbling. Exactly. Um, Lindsay says, I resonate with this. It feels like something big is coming for me. I keep seeing 555 five, five everywhere and all points to something coming. I feel like I'm in anticipation. That's going to make me move, if that makes sense. Well, five is like the biggest change number, isn't it? It's a huge change number, but it's not necessarily an easy energy. Five is the number of Mars, and Mars tends to break things up before he rebuilds them. Well, he doesn't rebuild them. He just, he, you know, Mars, God of War, he just tends to kind of get rid of things. Um, he also gives us energy in mojo. So if you're seeing repeated fives, it can be that you need to put energy in a certain direction. You need to uh, really tap into those kind of resources that you've, that you've got. But everyone's feeling a little bit wired and tired at the moment. And, you know, Mars rules the adrenal glands. Everyone's feeling a little bit burnt out. So you've got to do things to kind of nurture your nervous system and your adrenals mm -hmm. to, uh, to keep getting up every morning and doing what you choose to do. Yeah, um, yeah. Hi, Marie. Um, just you've just missed off a, a something on that sentence. Um, OK, so let's just see if you've got your cards with you, haven't you, girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've always got your cards like me. Marie says, I feel like I'm getting closer to my purpose. Just poured in so many directions and not sure what to do. Yeah, it's just it's, it's finding that inner peace, isn't it? And kind of the eye of the storm riding it out and just knowing that clarity will will appear at the right time so okay let's go back over the questions Lindsay says it definitely feels like um it's going to be a test okay so if you're still with me and you want a question answered just repost your comments only lets me see a handful at a time Okay, so let's just see about Helen, because Helen says she feels like she's in a, a deep, dark, dark hole at the minute. If you want to pull some cards, Nicola, and I'll... What, what sun sign are you, Helen? Do you know what sun sign you are, Helen? When's your birthday? Twenty third of September. So, Saji. Um, no, she's um, so Lee uh, Virgo is up to the sixteenth. So she's um, Libra. Libra, right? Okay. What I get for go on. So go on. No, go on. No, go. <laughs> what I get for Helen is um, I feel like this is a a mainly the focus is the career but it's about self-worth so what I've got I'm using astrology dice so Aries has come up the number 10 has come up so the number 10 can relate to career um it can also be about how you're being seen in the world so it can relate to something not feeling started um, I'm also using chakra dice and I feel like this has got a lot to do with um your safety your your foundations, your safety, how safe you feel, uh, sharing who you are and open up, open up something around intimacy as well. I don't just mean sexual intimacy. I mean, it's your intimacy with life and with yourself and the way that you allow yourself to express yourself. 
Um, and definitely there's some blockage around the throat chakra, which is about you not being able to fully express who you are. So that's what I get. Yeah, I mean, my cards pretty much reflect that. I've got the first card out is the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is somebody who's carrying a heavy burden, quite literally. Um, but they don't, they're coming to the end of something. It's, a, you know, it's a very, it's a very cyclical number. You know, once you go through this 10 period, but a 10 period can last like three months or like 30 years, because it's up to you to stop carrying the burden that you're carrying. You've got to be very conscious of what isn't serving you well at the moment. Um, the next card is the Queen of Cups. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, the Queen of Cups is a real energy of, it's a very kind of scorpionic, cancerian energy, a very watery energy, and it can bring a touch of bluesiness. Mm especially when it's next to the Ten of Wands. But um, the Prince of Wands is there as an outcome card. And that's dynamic fire energy. And I think, you know, when Mars moves into Leo, which is the 11th of June, I think you'll start sparking up again. The thing is, being a Libra, and you're a card, what's known as a cardinal sign. So you've got to have all the cardinal signs, like Aries, like Capricorn, they've all got to have a very distinct goal, a very distinct thing to actually work for. When you're kind of going, oh, I don't know whether to do this, I don't know whether that, you know, I've tried that, I've tried that, nothing's working it just disperses your energy. You know, Libra is actually a very ambitious, ambitious sign, but it's also um, a sign that tends to prevaricate a little bit, you know, because it's a, you know, it's an air sign. So they tend to hold a lot in their minds. Whereas you're going through something quite emotional at the moment and it might feel quite unfamiliar and quite painful. Um, but it's it's like Anne-Marie said, it's a very cathartic process at the moment. You've got to face those emotions and work through them. But yeah, there's something sticking with that ten of wands. Mm, I hope that um, resonates with you, Helen. She said, don't fight over me. <laughs> um, Laura, that's her birthday too. Interesting. Oh, hi, Joanne. Hey, that's great. You're getting loads of opportunities and you don't know which one to go for. That's brilliant. And if you need a, a mentor session, then I'm happy to talk it through. Um, Laura says, I'm still here. My issue has ah, just gone. Helen says that really resonates. I'm Marie, there's been a really big personal change of last year and I really don't feel safe. And Nicola, that's so true. I can't make a decision. Thank you. <laughs> Right, you'll have to keep posting your comments. I'm so sorry. They only show me four at a time. Um, the person I just mentioned, Laura, can you just please post again? And uh, and the last lady with Helen, was it? The, yeah. That we just read for. The thing about the decision is, you know, with the North Node currently in Gemini and the eclipse is happening there, you're going to have to make a decision. And I think, you know, you'll find that that eclipse on the 14th, you'll find it quite powerful that, it, you know, something will become very obviously you've got to stop doing it, you know, in order to move forward. I know that sounds a little bit vague, but it's, you know, yeah, yeah, we, sure. we know, don't we? We know when, yeah. when we're kind of, you know, flogging a dead horse, basically. Lindsay says, I'd love a card, please. I'm just trying to work out where my purpose lays. All right, finding your purpose is such an ambiguous thing, isn't it? Because you can find purpose and meaning in, well, planting seeds and growing our own crops, you know? So it, it really is your purpose about what makes you happy. Okay. Uh, Nicola, you're going to have to remember this. Laura says, no worries, my shoes business has just launched. I'm really proud. The launch went well, but there's something stopping me from fully letting go. Right, let me just do Laura because she was first and then we're going to do Lindsay and Marie. Uh, Lindsay, Marie, who want guidance. So Laura says there's something stopping me from fully letting go. Okay, let's just see if we can... What does letting go mean? Well, 
<laughs> I've got three, which is the number of creativity, and I've got Sagittarius. So there's a creative block, definitely. Again, this comes around safety, foundations, how you feel secure. So I think this is letting go of security in some way. You know, that can be emotionally letting go of things. And um, this has got to do with the heart as well. So this can be around self-love. So if it is something around you creatively holding yourself back, um, because there's a fear around failure, then you know you're blocking the thing that you really truly love. And actually, it's almost about you're not you're not loving yourself enough to let go. So I hope, yeah. What I was just about to say fear of failure you kind of took the words out of my mouth because I've got the seven of wands which is always feeling on the back foot and kind of like having to defend your actions in some way um, you need to look as well where that comes from is it because you've had as we all have anybody who's in who's self-employed has had failures that we you know we've, we've got to rebound from or is it a case of that inner voice of self-criticism and then if it is, where does it come from? Because the, the output of that is the three of pentacles and the five of cups, which is kind of showing the three of pentacles is about very creative, mm -hmm. lots of ideas. But when you try to bring them to earth, when you try to ground these ideas, it feels like something emotionally goes wrong with them. That's exactly what's here. Yeah. You know, so it, it's almost then becomes a fear, like you said, of failure because the the, the emotional price of failure for you. And I, I do detect a slight perfectionism. The, the emotional fear of failure is stopping you going forward. Yeah. Uh, Laura said, yes, that's it. And it's about trusting. Yeah. Okay. And there is that thing that when you when uh, Anne Marie read your question out, and before I even pulled any cards, the word imposter syndrome jumped into my mind, and that's something we all have to go through. Which is like we never feel like we're good enough. We never feel like we've read all the books we want to read. That we've that our website looks perfect. That um, we've done all the right training that we need to do. But believe you me, you know you are good enough. Mm. And you need to look at the roots of whoever told you that you weren't. Yeah. It'll probably go back to childhood. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about yeah. really to help you move forward with that. It's, it, for me, it's about kind of self-loving, self-loving who you are. Mm. All right. Marie says, and Laura says, thanks so much. Yeah. 100% imposter syndrome. Um, she said, thanks so much. She said, oh my gosh, every word you've just said. <laughs> All right, so Marie and yeah, okay, so let's do Marie. You, I'm really sorry, whoever wants a question, just keep posting, even though you might feel like you're posting create like a crazy person. It's the only way I'm going to see it. So Marie, okay, Marie. Let's see what's going on for Marie. Okay, so I've got um, the number nine and I've got Virgo. So I feel like the number nine is saying that you're nearly at the end of something. It could be a health thing. In fact, Marie, am I right in thinking that there is health things with you? I can't remember if we've spoken about it before, but Virgo is the sign of health and healing. So I feel like maybe something's coming to a closure where that's concerned or you're getting some answers possibly relating to health. Oh, uh, well, let's have a look at the chakras. So we've got the root chakra unbalanced. We've got the heart and the third eye. So I guess whatever's been going on has affected your foundations because it's the root, possibly your physical health and the body. Um, your heart and I, I feel like maybe there's always why me why is this happening to me and then the third eye which um is possibly caused you to 
question, you know, kind of, um, I'm just trying to figure out if this is the third eye or the crown, either way, it's, um, you've lost your kind of ability to see, see into the future, if, if you understand what I mean, uh, lost a little bit of hope. Oh, Marie says yes, some health issues. Yeah, so I feel like it's um, shut you down a little bit where you can't see beyond what's going on. It's almost like a hopeless or a worry about what the future might look like. What do you get, Nicola? I just feel like I'm gonna repeat what you've just said because my, four, my first card is the Four of Swords, someone lying down that and the Four of Swords is always for me personally, somebody who's been through a bit of illness or had to take a respite. And it's next to the hanged man. Hanged man isn't a dark card. It's just a period of stasis, of non-movement. But you also notice that he's upside down. And so his spirituality is upside down. His intuition is upside down. So, um, you know, the four of swords can also mean that, you know, a bit of anxiety as well. So this illness or health stuff has brought anxiety, which makes you afraid of moving forward but the hanged man is also Neptune and Neptune causes clouds it's kind of he doesn't I don't feel this is totally over for you because there's a, a boundarylessness to Neptune so you have to be very careful with your health it's almost like you can only do things in spurts when you've got the energy and I think you need to just keep caring for yourself, managing your energy, learning to say no, putting boundaries in place, et cetera, et cetera. And the final card there is the King of Cups. And so the King of Cups is, I would say, by June, which is, you know, when we get into cancer season, um, you're going to find that things start flowing better. But for the time from now to then, you know, to the end of June, I would just say just kind of treat yourself well don't push yourself if unnecessarily I hope that resonates Marie so if anybody else wants a question just keep firing them at us because this is fun Lindsay, right, yeah, Lindsay, okay, cool. So let's do Lindsay. So I get Virgo again and I get the number two. So I feel, and I, and I actually think I'm probably kind of using what you've said in the feed as well. Number two is about duality. So for me, I feel like there's a juggle, juggling energy going on. Oh, Laura says we're both so in sync, how special. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Um, I feel like there's a juggling energy going on with you. And again, I think I am picking up on what you've been saying in the feed. Uh, but I think you're working really hard. Like Virgo's about harvest, isn't it? And uh, really planting the seeds. Uh, and number two is you could have two things going on, or it could just mean that you're, you're juggling things at the minute. I actually feel like you're, you're quite imbalanced. The only thing that jumped out was the third eye crown, the, the spiritual center. I feel like maybe there's too much going on in your mind. And I think you've, you've just said this, you, you're struggling. I think Lindsay was the one who said about, did Lindsay say about choosing an idea before? I can't remember. So yes, I think, I think so. Yeah. Uh, not knowing which way to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the, the one that jumped out. And that's basically saying it's around, you can't focus and find the right idea um, because there's, there's 
there's there's a juggling going on in your mind about what you're creating and what what you want to create so i just think it's causing a bit of a too much noise well for lindsay i've got you are the high priestess you know whatever that means to you it means you're deeply intuitive deeply spiritual you're a healer so you know i think you are probably working in that field because you're and if so you're on you're on the right path i sort of feel that august is really salient for you just looking at those cards and i can't kind of link it to the cards it's just what i get the feeling i get from those cards although this is the time of leo um the sun and i do feel that with the sun there something's gonna come to completion there for you it's it's like it's but in a good way not an not an ending way it's like everything's going to come together so i you know i don't think that it's i think it's a case at the moment of just taking one step in front of the other you know you can't rush anything you know especially with all these planets going retrograde you've got to just slow everything down and just kind of you know, take it a day at a time. And the sun will give you inspiration. In fact, one of the best things to do is to go out when early in the morning when the sun, you know, just after dawn, I know dawn is early at the moment, but maybe around 5, 6 a.m., go outside and talk to the sun because the sun will give you very direct answers about where you're supposed to be going. We get all our light, our life force, our inspiration from the sun. I think Lindsay uh, is trying to choose between healing and coaching and I know how that feels because that was me a couple of years ago before I thought I can't choose they're both healing both uh, you know and I brought the two together um, so I know you've trained in my quantum holographic echo healing haven't you Virgo is the sixth house which is the healing house so Virgo is the healer so as Nicholas said, the high priestess, the healer. Um, so you've, if, if you are struggling, I would find a way to, to amalgamate the two. Whatever you do, Lindsay, and I think we've already talked about this in your throat, you are healing, whether you're coaching or whether you're healing, you are healing because that's the, the energy that you bring through no matter what you do. The other thing I get from that as well is that with the healing, she's very comfortable in that realm. It's, I, I think it's something probably that you do, that you have done, that you know you've got good skills in. And there is a tendency, because I don't pull my punches, so I'm just going to say it, to be a little bit complacent there. Whereas with the, uh, and it's a more reliable source of income probably for you as well because of that. With the counselling, I think it'll be a slower start in terms of financial um, gain with that. But don't let that put you off. I completely think that you can meld the two, as Amory says. There's a way to do that. She loves the healing, she says. Yeah, and I think you're very good at it. Yeah, she feels and, a bit out of alignment with the coaching at the minute. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel, I don't intuitively feel that the, the coaching thing is taking off much at the moment. But I do more than one thing. You know, you've just, it, you don't have to just have one string to your bow. And in fact, it gets a bit boring when you're doing one thing all the time. You know, you go into self-employment to keep your interest in your energy high. If I just do astrology all the time it, or tarot all the time, it burns me out. You know, so to be able to go away and do something else. And I tell you, by God, the world needs healers at the moment. Laura says you're good at healing. <laughs> so there's a message. <laughs> there you go. We've just helped you follow your purpose. <laughs> um okay so there was a lady called lindsay knight yeah lindsay knight okay but i've got I know Scorpio, right? Okay. Okay. So I've got Scorpio and the number 10. Okay. So I think maybe something's at full pelt for you right now, Lindsay. Like something may have exploded, something may have uh, 
really been brought to your attention that's kind of got a full power and charge with it. Um, I feel that this... Hmm. Mm, what does that try to tell me? I feel that this made me, you've had some shocking something. All I can feel is like something has just come into your awareness or your life or something. I feel like something exploded or is about to explode. It could be good. Um, but just let me know if that resonates with you. What do you have, Nicola? What was the question? I think she just wanted, um, a, just she would just wanted a little reading. I think. I think this lady's been let down badly. Oh. If you're still with us, Lindsay, uh, let us know if that resonates with you. What have you got? Yeah, I mean, I've got the Ten of Swords. All oh, right, okay. I've got the Hermit. So whatever happened pushed her into this mm. Hermit phase, mm. which can be a literal Hermit, but it's more oh, kind of like a deep, deep reflection. Yeah. Um, and then I've got the death card, which sometimes is literal death, but this this is not what this is about. It's about, you know, a forthcoming transformation. And of course, the death card is Scorpio. So it resonates with what you were yeah. saying. There's out of disaster comes something good. Mm -hmm. But I think she's been through this very, very testing, very, very difficult phase. And the hermit is Virgo. So, um, you know, that can be, in, in astrological terms, work or health. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, there's, there's, there's something that's kind of, you know, it's not been great. Mm. And just processing. Just as, yeah, sure, right, with, a, with a, a crying emoji there. So, yeah, something kind of like, you weren't expecting this, has just kind of oof, come into your life, maybe pulled the rug, and it might feel right now it's so emotionally charged march was significant around that march mm. let's see can we is there any like can we give her words of hope is there anything like no i mean the death card is actually hopeful because it, it yeah, does it does mean that um uh, I I do kind of feel that you know as she gets her, on back on her feet there's choices to be made but she's going to go through a period, and I think this is about a three-month period, where she's been offered things and she doesn't want them. So it, it just feels like, you know, she's she's kind of blocking herself a little bit at the moment. You know, big emotional choices to be made. Um, and again, I do think that she's at a bit of a crossroads, but she won't make the wrong decision. She'll make that she'll make the right decision for her, but she's still got to process stuff. Lindsay, no, were you, because this is how it feels now I'm thinking about it, this, what this feels is, and somebody wrote it before, and now I'm thinking about, I'm thinking it might have been you, where you said you feel like you're in a dark hole, this is how this feels, that you're yeah. in a bit of a dark hole situation. But it's not, I don't think it's just one event, I think it's an yeah. accumulation yeah. of knocks. Uh-huh. But, you know, there's a, you're coming up to a period, I, I think, where it's, you know, where you'll be faced with choices and you'll make the right choice. Because what's happening with Pluto now? Pluto... Pluto's retrograde at the okay. moment in Capricorn. So, you know, I would need to see a chart. But yeah. I mean, Pluto can be when he retrogrades and he does for six months every year. So it's kind of it's not unusual. But, you know, it can... I, I think Pluto retrograde, it, in, unless it's linking to personal planets, it's more about what's going on, on in the world at the moment, really. But it can give us that extra need to go deep and kind of look at our psychological yeah. 
patterns that we keep repeating that yeah. the kind a of, bit bring. of a dark night of the soul can't it because it yeah really de definitely he's lord of the underworld you know so he drags us to the depths and then starts bringing us back up again he does. just know it doesn't last forever so yeah. yeah so i hope that resonates with you lindsay so samantha harwick hardwick okay if anybody's still wanting a question just keep launching it on the comments okay so samantha So I've got things maybe around the mind or communication going on for you. I've got Mercury. So Mercury rules how we communicate. I've got, um, let me see now, we've got a couple of chakras that could do with a little, that are out of sync a little bit here. So you've got your foundations, you've got your sacral chakra, which is emotions. You've got your throat and your third eye and crown so there's a bit of a, a misalignment in your life we've got the number two which is about duality maybe doing too many things or trying to make a decision between this and that and if you're trying to make a decision about this or that it can be based around you, you, you know, you're going into the fear, you're going into the anxiety about what does this mean for me if I go this way? What does it mean if I go that way? Uh, and I feel that it's causing, you know, your emotions are the biggest thing that's playing out right now. And your emotional health is disturbing the way that you're expressing yourself, the way that you're thinking around clear thinking and it's put you into a state of a bit of a anxiety. So I hope that makes sense. What, what do you have? What was the question? Um, it was just, may I have a reading? Yeah, I, and it's Samantha, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think Samantha is really kind of solid and really kind of knows herself. I think she's quite a powerful force. I've got the Queen of Pentacles here, and, and I think that is definitely Samantha. She's she's just very much, I, I think she's going through an uncharacteristic wobble, you know, because I've also, I've got the Two of Pentacles, which is the juggler, you know, where it's like, do I do this? Do I do that? You know, and it's that kind of having to make big life decisions. And it's followed by the Two of Swords. So two is actually a number of, of stasis, of not being able to move something forward, of not seeing something, not having all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. But I would say, you know, Samantha, you're the queen of pentacles. You've got everything you need at your feet. You've just got to ground yourself, you know, get outside, get your feet on the ground, you know, just do all that earthing stuff and just breathe, you know, do some breathing exercises. And I think the answers are going to come round to you because I don't I don't think you're normally this kind of indecisive it doesn't feel like that I think you're very direct so, so it's going to it's going to be fine I'm, I'm not feeling any kind of adversity the energy around you feels really light actually so Samantha's saying it resonates uh, she's not attracting clients so what's coming through to me as I read that question is to reframe that what is it about you that's not attractive to clients that's the question that you need to ask yourself. What is it about me that I believe is not attractive to clients? So it's the inner stuff that you need to work on. It's your own belief. So I hope yeah. that helps. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think she's got much to worry about. I think, you know, she just needs to let more of her personality out for a play, out for a whirl. Don't be too corporate because the queen of pentacles can be quite, you know, I, I don't know whether you've come from a corporate background and you're trying to do, you know, transpose those corporate ways into something that's a little bit more woo, because let's face it, we're, we're all woo here, aren't we? I think you just need to show your fire and your passion. And also, I think what would help is showing your, you know, don't hide your ideas, don't hide your opinions. You know, you're going to piece some people off when you start kind of being opinionated, but you'll attract the right people to you who agree with your value system. 
which is very defined and very strong is what I'm feeling. So don't, I, I would say, don't worry about it. The clients are going to come. Yeah. And also Mercury is retrograde. So it might just be an even bigger indication just to go within at the minute. You know, it's a big thing, isn't it, around attracting clients when you're, you know, self-employed and things like that. Um, I think everybody's up in the air at the moment. It's, it's kind of people don't want to commit because they can't see what's ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So they can't make those decisions, mm -hmm. you know, as, and all the economic uncertainty. So you've got to meet clients where they're at. Mm -hmm. You know, if people are feeling uncertain and afraid, then you've got to code that message and, and, and shine it back out at them that you can, you know, help them through that. Yeah. But I, I don't think she's got a problem. I think she's going to be, you know, fine, to be honest. Okay, so Verity, she just said, can I have a card, please? So let's see what's going on for Verity. I'm going to let you go first. I don't know, Verity, whether this means anything to you, but I'm getting John or Johnson, that, that kind of derivative of name in my head. I don't know why that's relevant. I don't know at all. And if it doesn't, park it. Um, I've got the Ten of Cups here, which is the card, I call it the Happy Families card. It's kind of like, you know, the heterosexual couple, the 2.4 kids, Volvo on the drive, kind of white picket fence kind of card. But it's next to the Princess of Swords and also the Hanged Man, again, Neptune. So there's something around the family base or the home base that is confusing you. And it's, it's almost like it's on hold. Now, that might be issues with immediate family or a partner or, or your children, if you've got kids. Or it could literally be the home that you're not. There's something that needs changing in the home that you're just putting off for now. Mm -hmm. You know, Neptune and Neptune goes retrograde on the 25th of June. Now, when Neptune is not like the other retrograding planets, when Neptune goes retrograde, the, you know, the rose tinted specks come off and we start seeing things more clearly. So towards the end of June, we're going to start seeing, you know, these issues we've been struggling with over the last six months are going to kind of hone into view. She said her mother's maiden name is Johnson. Right. OK. OK. I don't know. So if that's if that's the case, then what's going on with the whole matri? It might not be mother. It might be the whole matriarchal side. What's going on? So, you know, around Johnson, around the family. Mm, brilliant. So I get uh, Libra. So that's about relationships. So there's something around relationships. But I also, the dice kind of rolled off the table. And for me, any, any little things like that, they mean something. Um, and what initially jumped out at me was change. There's something changed. Um, and I got, when I rolled again, it was the number one. So it's like a new, maybe a new start. So maybe you're on a new start or there's a new beginning that's happened for you. Um, the chakras that are kind of talking to me are the heart, the throat and the third eye. So, so this is possibly something around relationships that either you're super, super happy um, or there's just some, some change that's happened that has kind of got to you, getting to you a little bit, maybe a little bit emotional. You want to talk about it, but you can't or something like that, but maybe something's been revealed or maybe this is like the ten of cups which i think you got which is a, a really lovely happy celebration so i don't know which one resonates with you you'll have to let us know i i just feel that over the next month something that's been unclear is going to become very clear by the end of you know and this is in the month of june by yeah, the end of june. I, feel, I feel that too i feel like something that was hidden will be revealed and again that could be a beautiful thing okay so we've been going for a little while so any anyone else Rosie said thank you 
So I think we've pretty much done everybody. <laughs> Should we do final group thing? Yeah, message for everyone. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I've got like ideas off flowing. So really big creative ideas are going to come flooding in. And uh, what this is going to do, actually, it's going to like really side swipe our level of consciousness. So it could be that our level of consciousness is really turned on its head. What we once thought was true is like that's flipped over because the, the, the chakra is, is like it's standing up like that we're all they've all been flat so it's like something around our insight our level of awareness and consciousness of spirituality is going to be flipped um and it could be that we just get these massive downloads of ideas and creativity or we just tap more into our spiritual beings go you know we we, we come closer to the creator if you like I mean, I'm more of a glass half empty person, but so I'll give you the other side of that, which but I, I, I agree. I've got the Ten of Pentacles as a first card. So Ten of Pentacles is all about kind of like your security and the uh, and material security and, and the things that, and systems and belief systems even that you adhere to. Um, and then we've got two very dodgy cards. We've got the Five of Wands and the Nine of Wands. Mm. So, you know, I... I I reiterate that I think that, and I think this is about a change in perception. We're going to all get news in June, and perhaps we'll talk about this in June, that changes our perception, that turns everything on its head. What we thought was solid, mm -hmm. we're going to be questioning it. And so, um, you know, the, the advice card really of the nine of wands is we've been through a lot collectively mm. and we're going to go through a bit more but you need to stand your ground and just be very certain of where you're going and what you're bringing and what skills and talents that you have it's not a time for self-doubt mm. it's a time to just do and you know the reason we become self-employed a lot of us if it's by choice is to do things that you know make us happy and make us, you know, that we do, that we really kind of like want to get passionate about and share with the world. Now, these are trying times and it's very difficult to do that, but you've got to stand your ground. You know, we've got to, we've, we're nearly through this crap that's going on, you know, but June is going to make everybody gasp. Trust me. Yeah, I, I, I feel that with that, with that, um, I think, yeah, something's going to come in and we're going to be like, oh my god yeah and where yeah. like what the so you might not is this? believe it type of thing no okay. i agree oh thank you so much so i'm so happy that you could make it <laughs> um, so yeah we bid you all a farewell and we'll probably see you next week take care everyone bye bye